made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. And now, before we continue our reading, To, I want to invite you to pretend that you aren't sitting in a pew, but in a boat. Is everyone aboard? Okay, let's push on. We're sailing across the lake, enjoying the fresh air, rowing together to get to the other side. Uh-oh. Those clouds look like they might be. Our waves are definitely getting bigger. There is a storm coming. The wind and waves build. The rain that comes. The boat takes on water and row as we might. We cannot get safely to the other side of the lake. All night we battle the storm, getting nothing but exhausted. When evening came, Jesus was alone on the mountain. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for wind was against them. And early in the morning, Jesus came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, and saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith, why did you? Out. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped Jesus, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. If you were to open the Bible to Matthew, you would find this passage follows three other passages, which take place one after another. Last week we had the story of the feeding of the 5,000, which, as we said, follows Jesus' learning of the beheading of John the Baptist. And that gruesome passage occurs after Jesus is rejected in his hometown of Nazareth. It's the one thing after another, and even so, learned that this grief and strain on Jesus still didn't keep him from having compassion on the crowds who followed him, and from enlisting the disciples in helping to take care of their needs. Now, perhaps, Jesus has reached his limit. The crowds have been fed, and even the Son of God late in the afternoon, and Jesus sends his disciples away in a boat to cross the Sea of Galilee. Jesus tells the crowds, time, time to go home. And he climbs a mountain to be by himself to pray and rest. And meanwhile, those clouds roll in, bringing a storm to the disciples on the lake. Does Jesus know the danger the disciples face alone in their boat, out on the crashing we can assume Jesus does, but he, he doesn't rush off to, to help them. He needs his time and space alone. The next morning, Jesus' spirit, mind, and body are rejuvenated, and he walks down that mountain and right out on the water, refreshed for his disciples. It had to seem like an unreal experience for those exhausted. 
only thought seemed to be, it's a ghost. <laughs> Feeding a mass of people with a few loaves of bread and fish must not be in the same category as walking on water. And all this drama leading up to this, to the miracle of the story where Jesus and then Peter walks on the water. Peter walks on the water. And how does he do it? Apparently by faith. And in a moment of doubt, Peter starts to sink. Our tendency in stories might be to put ourselves in them to imagine ourselves as Peter, carried by faith out of our boats and into this miraculous walking on the water. And it's, it's only natural for us to do this. It's easier for us to associate with Peter than with Christ. We can relate to Peter. save just me. He doesn't save just you. I can run to Jesus and he will be there, but rescue is not for my sake. Remember, Peter was the one who wanted to get out of the boat. Jesus was already coming to him, and Peter says, well, if it's you, tell me to get out there too. Jesus obliges him, probably shaking his head at the same is not for us to walk on water. 
Salvation is for us, the body of Christ, to be that boat which not only supports one another, but that is there for any others whom Jesus might rescue from the waters. Lord, save us. Save us from all the things which seem so overwhelming in life. Save us from our selfishness, 